Since we are talking about systems at equilibrium, we can also quantify this process using thermodynamic expressions. So, the equilibrium expression for A in equilibrium with B is expressed as capital K, being the equilibrium constant, being equal to the concentration of B at equilibrium over the concentration of A at equilibrium. An equilibrium expression can also be calculated starting from the rate law expression. At equilibrium, the rate of change of A is zero, which is still equal to Kr times the equilibrium of the concentration of B minus Kf times the concentration of A at equilibrium. If we rearrange this expression, we get Kf over Kr being equal to the concentration of B at equilibrium over the concentration of A at equilibrium. Since both the equilibrium constant K and the ratio of the rate constants Kf over Kr is equal to the concentration of B at equilibrium over the concentration of A at equilibrium, we can relate the rate constants to the equilibrium constant, resulting in the equilibrium constant being equal to Kf over Kr. This means that to understand how the equilibrium will change as a function of temperature, we can use both the Van't Hoff equation to modify the equilibrium constant, or we can use the Arrhenius equation to modify both rate constants. Let's now verify this fact that if we were to change the equilibrium constant as a function of temperature, like using here with the Van't Hoff equation, that we would actually get the exact same change based on the fact that we actually have the Arrhenius equation modifying both rate constants, and that the modification of both these rate constants gives us the exact same equilibrium constant after the reaction or after the temperature change has occurred. Now here I've written my Van Toff equation up here, which is just the standard Van Toff equation where I'm modifying my equilibrium constant, and that's relative to the change in the enthalpy of the reaction, which I have illustrated right here. And then I have my two Arrhenius equations where I've got my forward reaction rate constant change based on the activation energy, which is what I have illustrated right here. And for the forward direction, it is just labeled as just Ea since it's just this little barrier that we have to overcome. For the reverse rate, which is what I have written down right here, we can see that I have this special relationship, or at least this more involved one, where I have Ea minus delta R of the for the reaction, the change in enthalpy for the reaction. And that's just because we have in our expression here that our, our change in enthalpy is a negative number. And so what that means is that if I want to find out what the total distance or the total amount of energy that the products have to do to get back over the hump, well, I'm going to be writing that or express that as is the activation energy minus this enthalpy. And that's strictly because, as I said before, this is a negative number. And so when I do that negative negative, then I end up with a total positive barrier that the products have to overcome to come back to the reactants. And so the strategy that I'm going to employ to show that both these methods, Van Toff and Arrhenius, will give us the exact same thing, is I'm just going to show that, or what we already know is that the equilibrium rule constant K is equal to Kf over Kr. And so what we're going to show then is that this modified equilibrium constant K prime is going to be equal to Kf prime over Kr prime. And we're going to use the Van Toff and the Arrhenius equations to, to define what the equilibrium constant K prime is, the rate constant Kf prime, and the rate constant Kr prime are. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to simplify my Van Toff equation for my equilibrium constant. And so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply e to the power of to both sides. And so what that does is that that gets rid of the natural logarithm on the left hand side. And that gives me then on the right hand side e raised to the power of the enthalpy of the reaction divided by R times 1 over T minus 1 over T prime. And if I solve for K prime, then I'm left with the original rate constant before the temperature shift times E raised to the power of the enthalpy of the reaction divided by R times 1 over T minus 1 over T prime. I can do the same thing down here for the Arrhenius equations. I'm going to apply E to the power of just on both sides. That eliminates the natural logarithm, so I'm left with the rate constant Kf prime times Kf, or divided by Kf, I should say, and that's equal to E raised to the power of the activation energy over R times 1 over T minus 1 over T prime. And finally, I get 
kf prime is equal to kf times e raised to the power of the activation energy divided by r, 1 over t minus 1 over t prime. And then finally, for the reverse rate constant, I'm going to take e to the power of, again, to both sides. That eliminates my natural logarithm, so I get kr prime divided by kr, and that's equal to e raised to the power of the activation energy minus the enthalpy of the reaction divided by r times 1 over t minus 1 over t prime. And then if I solve for kr prime, then that's equal to kr times e raised to the power of the activation energy minus the enthalpy of the reaction divided by r times 1 over t minus 1 over t prime. And so like I said before, my strategy is, is I'm just going to take my kf prime and I'm going to divide it by my kr prime. And in the end, if I end up with k prime, like I have up here, then we know that, yes, indeed, the Arrhenius um, equation can predict the change in the rate constants such that whatever the changes in this ratio of the forward and the reverse reaction will still give us the same change that we should expect if we use the Van Hoff equation to basically predict what is the change in our equilibrium constant. So let's do just that. So that means then I'm going to write kf prime over kr prime, which means I'm writing kf e raised to the power of the activation energy over r times 1 over t minus 1 over t prime, and that's divided by kr times e raised to the power of the activation energy minus the heat of the reaction divided by r, 1 over t minus 1 over t prime. And so in this denominator, because I have this difference that, that's in this exponential, then what I can do is I can separate that exponential into two pieces. So on the top, I still have kf times e raised to the power of the activation energy divided by r, 1 over t minus 1 over t prime. And on the bottom, what I get is kr times e raised to the power of ea over r times 1 over t minus 1 over t prime. And that's multiplied by E raised to the power of the negative of the heat of the reaction divided by R times 1 over T minus 1 over T prime. And now I can start to cross off terms. I have an E raised to the A over R times 1 over T minus 1 over T prime on top. And I have one of those on the bottom. And so then what I can continue to do here is I can then say, well, here I've got E raised to the power of negative of an exponent, which is the same thing as saying it's the positive. So I can move it to the top and I can say that's the equivalent of saying kf times e raised to the power of positive the heat of the reaction divided by r times 1 over t minus 1 over t prime divided by kr. And so we know still that kf over kr is equal to capital K, or equilibrium constant. So I have capital K, or equilibrium constant, is equal to E raised to the power of the heat of the reaction divided by R times 1 over T minus 1 over T prime. And then finally, as my last step, if we look at this relationship that I've just written down, and I'm just going to scroll back up, because we can see that that is the exact same relationship that I have written down up here for how our equilibrium constant changes using the Van Toff equation. And so what I can write then immediately is that I can say, well, kf prime over kr prime is equal to my equilibrium constant at the new temperature. And so again, all this verifies is that the Van Toff equation can be used to describe changes to our equilibrium constant, and that we can use Arrhenius to describe our changes to our two rate constants, and that the way that Arrhenius modifies these two rate constants, the ratio of those two rate constants still equal whatever the Van Toff equation describes of what our change to our equilibrium constant would be. Ultimately, what this demonstrates is that there's a pretty fundamental link between the thermodynamics of a system as described by the equilibrium constant and the kinetics of the system as described by the rate constants.